So this is how we were talking about, you know, the, we, the chart where we're going around and layering all of the combinations of controls that can happen. So you can see for class one devices, well, for all the devices, you're always going to have general controls that are applicable. On top of that, you're going to have GMPs. This is the one where we said it's like winning the lottery. You don't even have to have a quality system. You have to have like a complaint procedure, and that's about it for, for this, this category. For the other categories, you have to have a full quality management system with the exclusion of design controls, except for about there's five devices that require design controls. All, all, five, all class one devices, except for those few I mentioned, require a 510K or exempt from special controls. And so you could just see from here how complex it is just to understand the submission, the, the exemptions. Um, and by misinterpreting the exemptions, you may decide that you don't need certain types of controls when you really do. Even if you're exempt here in the, the happy-go-lucky category, there are still one or two procedures that you must have with the FDA. You still have to register and list your facility, and your contractors still have to register and list their facility. Um, so I've had customers that, ha that, that refused to listen to me that their contract manufacturers had to be registered and listed, and then they get their products stuck in customs until their contract manufacturer gets registered and listed. Um, and then they're on the FDA radar and not in a good way. So that's a perfect example of misinterpreting your exemptions. That customer also had a sterile product. A sterile product is never going to be GMP exempt because you have to have processes that are validated in a way to ensure you can make a sterile claim. He had two sterile products and didn't have, and so he had misinterpreted his, the way his exemptions applied.